Welcome to this week's episode of Thriving and Surviving, and Life in Spain. Um, I'm joined tonight by the lovely Rob and Karen, who are in their early 60s. They've made it all the way from sunny Burnley and Turf Moor to join us living here now in Arbalaes. They came over with a motorhome, um, wound their way through Spain, I think Denier and Javier and places like that, before ending up in Arbalaes, where they've now been living for a little while. Um, and they've agreed to have a chat with us this evening to talk about their lives, I suppose, and hopefully highlight to you guys what a life here in Spain could have to offer for you if you decide to take the plunge and come over and buy a second home or a holiday home. <laughs> Rob was a gas inspector in the UK and Karen was a retail manager. And um, Thank you guys for, for joining me this evening to chat to our wonderful clients over there in the UK via the, the channel that is YouTube. <laughs> makes us all famous, okay? <laughs> so we're obviously doing our usual yeah, trying yeah. wine as we go. We've introduced some tapas and some cheese this evening as well. So we're going to be sampling that as we chat away with you. So first question, why are Balayas, guys? Uh, we've travelled through uh, Spain for the last three years. Um, and um, Done three winters. We've done three winters. Um, and we've obviously researched extensively on, on the internet. And we've picked up on, on Richard's uh, YouTube channel. Um, and it's very informative. Um, it tells us basically uh, a, a lot of information, bars, restaurants, facilities within, within the village, within the town. Um, and um, it's uh, the location ways, it's ideal for us. Um, so you thought you'd come down and give it a go? Yeah, yeah exactly. So for us, um, we're 30 minutes away from, from the coast. We, we love the beach. There's four or five different beaches. Uh, there's lots to see. Uh, you've got the cities, Murcia, um, Al Almeria. Um, so yeah, location ways for us with the motor room, it's ideal. So how, how long ago was it that you actually moved in? We moved in September 2022 and I think what's important for both me and Rob is um, being part of the community and our beliefs is relatively small but there's a lot more there than what you think there is which what we found out and we, st we haven't even scratched the surface yet but it's, it's important for us to be able to walk somewhere and be part of the community and that's what we feel like in our belief. So we do, that leads nicely on to the next one. Would, would you, I, I mean, you obviously you came here, first impressions count for a lot, but they're often very different from the reality. Would you say that Arbalaeus is remote, you know? No, no, look, there's a, there's a new uh, link uh, onto the, the, the A7, which is the main motorway running down the Mediterranean, which is going to reduce the time to the coast by about sort of 10 minutes. So yeah, you can be in uh, Vera or uh, uh, on any of the players within about 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, you've got uh, Albox, which is mm -hmm. 10 minutes away. Uh, Urca is... Vera, which is 15 minutes away. So you've got plenty of facilities there. And if you want a big day out and you want to go shopping, there's plenty of uh, organised trips to the, the big shopping centres, or you can jump in your own car and be there within an hour. So it, it's... Remote is not a bad thing sometimes, you know, but you've still got lots and lots on your doorstep. Wonderful, and, 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 and again, so you know there's no public transport here, do you miss the bus? We never used a bus in the UK anyway, and to be totally honest, like I said, it's, it's great that if we do feel like we want to walk into our place to have a coffee or a wine or a beer, there's a couple of restaurants and stuff there. And like Rob just said, looking at, at your YouTube, it's made us realise, I think somebody Sorry, the past people that lived here turned around and said there's something like 15 walkable restaurants and bars to get to, and we've found some, not all, but we, we do intend to find all of them. <laughs> You've got plenty of time, yeah. yeah. Plenty of time. <laughs> we, we've had a little chat off camera before about <laughs> this, and these guys have got so many more places to discover, I think that, 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 yeah. that's fair to say. Um, we, we, um, have you discovered any fantastic shops since you, you, you know, I know you'd experienced Spain and you'd come over for, for a number of years with the motorhome and everything else, but locally, is there any fantastic shops? I mean, my love, wife loves global fashion down in L Box and says it's a real kind of... Yeah, no, place, the, but... uh, I, I'll be totally honest with you, when we first came out here uh, and we looked around, we thought, I, I thought at first there wasn't enough for me, but since we've been here, there is more than enough for me. And the fact that 
I went, we came to Arbalay first and we came on a Monday, didn't realise on a Monday that everything is shut anyway, so it was like a ghost town, but it's not normally like that. And as soon as we went into Olbock, I know it was error, I felt a lot better because it's, it's a proper town. The shoe shops, the yeah. handbag shops, the <laughs> dress shops, which... And, and, I try and to avoid shopping. taking with you any of these, so don't, don't shout too loud about it because I've got off lightly at the moment. There's, re- there's, there's lovely restaurants, there's really good, and uh, there's, uh, there's uh, I think, a, a good mix of Spanish restaurants and English restaurants. Yeah, so anything, can you remember that wonderful programme in the UK, which is Room 101? I've, I've got a new category, it's called Bang It in the Bazaar, which is, is, <laughs> is, is there anything that you'd quite happily consign to the dustbin since you've arrived in Spain, you know, whether it's rates, politicians, I don't know, <laughs> the, siesta. the choice is yours. The siesta, the amount of terms we've set off, Richard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Three o'clock to go and do, pick, well, pick yeah. some do-it-yourself gear up and realise everything shuts at half two till sort of five o'clock. Yeah, uh, the siesta wants to sign into that. I, 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 I love that answer, and all these years down the line, I still get caught. Mm-hmm. Regularly I go out in the exactly. car at ten past two, think I'll just pop in the town for a haircut, the course everything's bloody shut. <laughs> But I think, I think that Rob does it on purpose because when I want to go and buy some new shoes and stuff, we'll set off at a certain time and he knows exactly that all the shops are shut. Well, I, 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 I don't know about you, but I don't think it's a bad thing because no. I, I didn't like Sunday opening in the UK. We no. can't bloody survive for one day without no, having exactly. to go to Tesco's or retail. So exactly. I've never been a lover of Sunday opening. 24 hours shopping a, a week is never appealed. But unfortunately, when you're working out here, it's very frustrating. I did a viewing trip on Saturday and then we finished at half past to well I can't do anything now because everything's decided mm. to shut in the, on the prime retail day in the UK mm. oh, by 2 o'clock on a Saturday everything other than the Mercadonna's at the big supermarket, yeah. car dealers hairdressers, everything gone, yeah. but you, but get, you, you get, get used, used, to, you used to the system you get used to it, you, get used to it. You, you learn to do and I think we, we will do that as it gets hotter and we've done three, three four summers out here as it does get hotter uh, you, you've got to do as the Spanish do. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to have a siesta. You've got to get up early, get what you need to get done, and as it gets hotter, chill out, drink the wine, drink the beer. <laughs> or try. <laughs> it's a hard job, guys, but someone's got to bloody do it, haven't we? We're doing all this for you. You know, this is, this is sacrificing our personal time, our livers. <laughs> but what, what would you say has brought you the biggest joy, biggest happiness since you've arrived in Spain? It's the lifestyle, simple as that. The, the weather, uh, you nearly every day that you want, the curtains, the sun shines. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had the, the grandchildren over, you know, uh, the end of October, November. They're in the pool till nine o'clock, ten o'clock mm-hmm. at night. You've just got back home if you wanted to organise a barbecue. Yeah, you arrange everything for a sat there, and lo and behold, the, the heavens open, mm-hmm. the rain comes down. Yeah. And it's a disaster. You're Everyone's enough, crammed into a small conservatory yeah, right there under an umbrella yeah. trying to do sausages. Yeah. Yes, I know that one. I think we've had <laughs> five, five or six bad days since we've been here, since, mm-hmm. since July mm-hmm. last year. Yeah. It's and the to me, it's, it's, it's a landscape, land, landscape, it's the views, it's the, being able to do so much outdoors that you can't do. And we don't feel like we've had a winter. And we have done three, four winters out here in the motorhome. And we've got so used to that, and you don't realise just how bad the winter is in the UK. And when you come out here, we, we don't, it, it, it's nothing, it's just it's minuscule. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so you can do more. What, what, um, <laughs> have you had any um, epic faux pas so far trying to put your Spanish into practice? Can you speak a bit of Spanish? What, what's yeah, been... no, I, I can I can speak quite a bit of Spanish because I did um, sort of three years of. Uh, Spanish before they came out here. But if anybody else wants to sort of uh, learn Spanish, you know, every little town's got um, somewhere where you can uh, uh, join a, a Spanish course, and lots of people do it, and it's a good way of also socialising and meeting people. Yeah. Um, but um, regards, sort of, I mean, you're, you're going to start doing Spanish lessons, aren't you? Yeah, I've, I've basically got the basics, Richard, so uh, I, I really need to step up. But, uh, Where are you doing it? By the town hall or something? Because I know the I've, town hall do free yeah, lessons, yeah, yeah. but yeah. there's private tuition going on as well where they meet you in the bar and everything else. There so is. What are you thinking of doing? At the Hostel Maison, I believe, is a, a pack order as a, mm. a, a lessons, and quite a few of the neighbours are involved with that. So, yeah, I need to get involved. Mm. Luckily, at the moment, uh, Karen sort of picks up and, uh, and, and looks after the, uh, the, the, the 
Spanish element. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think that would be the bit. You know, I've always said going into a stuffy classroom on a small kids' chair in the town, albeit free or not, yeah. is not really going to go in and doing it in a bar. Go into the market. That's where you're really going to. Exactly. Well, then you'll enjoy it as well. You know, it's, 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 it's not the same as a classroom. So I, I think the thing about it is that they they respect and they'll help you. And if you're not 100 percent sure, which sometimes I forget a lot of things. And if I need to go in and out, I'll say in Spanish, you know, I forgot what it says in, in Spanish, and they'll help you. And, 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 if, and if you do make a mistake, they'll, they'll correct, correct you, but in a nice way. But they, they respect yeah. it. And the good thing is that most of the businesses uh, that you'll get involved with initially set, setting up, you know, the do-it-yourself, the ferretarias and that kind of place, and buy, buying your furniture and whatever, they at least have one person that speaks a little bit of English. Mm. So at least you can sort of start off and, and get what you need and there's lots of people within within the the, the town that will help support you but mm -hmm. speaking spanish is it essential to start with no is it a good thing long term i think it is yeah i think I, it's I, something you're you on that one but yeah. on, on you touched on something there that no one really ever brings up but i was always quite impressed like you say ferreteria by the way guys is the same as a kind of a b and q a hardware store i suppose mm -hmm. um call them bricolages in, in front but I was always so impressed with, you'd go to a garden centre, you'd pick a stone barbecue or, or a table, and either that evening or the following morning, man turns up with guys and it's delivered to you. you mm. I'm, 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 yeah. Have you found that the same? Exactly, or? exactly. We've, we've, not, we've not had a problem with any deliveries, you know. Mm. Amazon to your door, you know, you can set up an account to, really easy with your, with your address, you know, and, and if you go and order something and they say they're gonna turn up, yeah, the, the guys. So is your Amazon delivery driver on first name terms, like a lot of the yeah. people I've been with? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knows their pet names, yeah. he knows the kid names, he knows where they are. <laughs> this is exactly. the Amazon. To, Amazon me, um, to me, Amazon was always very good in the UK, and to me, it's no different here. And people say, oh, you know, Amazon, Spanish Amazon and stuff, and it's, it's, it's just as good. Yeah, but the local businesses are terrific as well. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. yeah. And the cost, the cost of delivery and stuff, um, and I do think they're more punctual. They, when, they, when they say they're going to come, they come. Uh, um, we're, we're kind of introducing, going to hopefully try to introduce each interview guys some wonderful local tapas so we can start telling you about them and then perhaps you can find this in restaurants and bars when you come over. But before we tell you about our tapas of the week this week, um, have you had any epic tussles with tapas, you know, making mistakes, ordering it or, or ending up with something you yeah, didn't expect yeah, on the plate? Yeah. <laughs> that went out for me. Uh, me. Uh, birthday, 59th birthday, uh, ordered uh, what I thought was going to be pulpo. a pulpo uh, octopus, but I uh, expected a small dish. A tapas, yes. <laughs> what I got was, was a plate with a full <laughs> octopus in, in the plate with some with kind of a, a, a sticky <laughs> sauce on, on top. Uh, Karen wouldn't even look at her. eyes and everything. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I managed to sort of cut a couple of legs off, and obviously we've got um, quite, quite, quite a few more than a couple of legs with an octopus. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was hilarious. You've just got to be careful, you know, Google Translate. But when you actually got to try a bit of this monster octopus, yeah. was it actually delicious or not? No, 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 no. It was, it, it was, was, but yeah. it was just the appearance and, and, and that's your... It's just the yeah. fact that every now and again it kept winking at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 I never ate seafood and stuff when I was back. It was always like, I like meat, you know, I'll have a burger, I'll have a steak, blah, blah, blah. blah. And it was only when I came to Spain that I finally was brave enough to mm. venture into the world of kind of yeah. octopus and prawns and, and shrimp. It's, it's fabulous. Yeah. The fish food's fabulous. Oh, I, I, I love octopus now. I mean, I go to a place and they actually cook it in Coca-Cola and kind of reduce it down and reduce Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But if you get a dodgy bat, then it's equally horrible. You yeah. know, calamari is the same. It could be like a rubber yeah. band. Yeah. Right, so on that note, um, oh, this, we, this we are beautiful. introducing various tapases. So this is um, known as... Pollo con salsa pimienta, so chicken to you in pepper sauce. I've got this one from La Casita, which is a wonderful restaurant, tapas bar in, in Arbaleas, but you can get it widely across the area. What do you think, guys? You've been I trying think, it. I, this is the first time. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going yeah. to have some more. This is the first sorry, guys, we're, we're probably yeah, making yeah. You, this is your the first eyes water. Time, uh, uh, this is absolutely delicious. Gorgeous chicken in the pepper sauce. That, um, I, mm. This is a, what they call a ration rather than a tapas. 
and I paid the grand sum of five euros for this great big mm, tub. Beautiful. Uh, to be honest, that'd be a meal for one person. I could, I'd, Some lovely fresh bread would be fantastic. Be but <laughs> listen, that's the end of episode one. Thanks for joining us, uh, Rob and Karen. Thanks to you guys. And please join us again in episode two when we'll continue our little chat and hopefully throw some new things into, into the mix. Mm -hmm. Thank you ever so much, guys.